Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. A pleasure to be on. We're doing a series on abrogation, which is some verses superseding others or some rulings superseding others. Some verses may have been removed from the Quran according to this theory of abrogation. And Dr. Shabir, we've looked at what abrogation is, and we've also looked at how abro abrogation looks within the Quran. And, and now I want to talk about what are the conceptual problems with this theory of abrogation. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Shabir, what would you identify as the conceptual problems? Yeah, so maybe as a preface to like to make the whole thing comprehensible, uh, let's talk about um, for a moment, the, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him giving an instruction apart from the Quran. And then later on, he says to people, you know what, I used to instruct you to do that, but now I'm telling you this is okay. So for example, it is mentioned that the Prophet peace be upon him said, I used to uh, tell you not to visit the graves, but now I'm telling you to visit the graves because it will help you to remind or it will remind you of the life hereafter and so mm -hmm. on so there's some good in it so maybe he prohibited it for some reason at one time and later on he saw some benefit and we can say okay this he's a human being he might learn from experience and he might give a new instruction uh, now, if we uh, transport this scenario to the Quran, uh, then we would have it that God is giving an instruction at one time, and then uh, within a short time, uh, relatively, within a few years sometimes, but you know, within the, 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 the lifespan of the Muslim community, this is a relatively short time, um, compared to, let's say, the 1400 years that uh, transpired since then. Mm -hmm. um, so one might want to know if, if changes are needed within a few years, you can imagine how many more changes would be needed in the subsequent centuries. Mm -hmm. um, so conceptually, what this leads to is uh, the accusation from the, those who want to attack Islam. And, and you will find many videos on this uh, on YouTube from you know, the average uh, lay uh, missionary for another faith faith, uh, who sees, you know, this some, as something <laughs> to be to pounce upon. Mm -hmm. So they will say, it looks like your Allah is changing his mind. Uh, he gives one instruction and then later on, you know, within a short time, he gives the opposite. It would seem that uh, he's not the all-knowing God that we know from our other scripture. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that becomes a conceptual problem. Mm -hmm. What are other conceptual problems, Dr. Shabir? Um, you, you, when, when you look at the, um, the, the situation of the Muslim reader, the Muslim reader of the Quran is encouraged to think of the Quran as the word of God speaking to us today. So the Muslim can, you know, open the Quran, read a page, get a piece of guidance, and that, you know, uh, plays in the mind of the Muslim for the rest of the day, almost like a bit of music that's between your ears and you can't get it out of your mm -hmm. head. Um, but if, if the Muslim has to work with the idea that, you know what, this verse I'm reading, uh, perhaps this verse was abrogated, meaning that it's there in the Quran, but it no longer applies. Uh, so I can't let this, you know, seep into my head because it might be giving me the wrong instruction. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if we, if we understand the Quran holistically, and we know that some parts of the Quran will uh, explain some other parts in more detail, uh, so per perhaps there is a general instruction in one part, but you will get a more specific instruction in another part. So they all come together in a conceptual whole. Um, and then, you know, that problem is lessened. Still, the average Muslim needs uh, to resort to commentaries on the Quran and need to consult uh, the average um, um, Muslim would need to consult uh, Muslim scholars to get a greater understanding uh, of the Quran. But uh, if we uh, did not have this idea of abrogation, the Muslim would feel more at ease with reading the Quran, absorbing it, and trying to live according to it, even for one day. Because they could take the Quran at face value. You yes. know, what's there is what is from it's, God. That's right. This is God speaking to me. But mm -hmm. uh, on the concept of abrogation, this verse may have spoken to some people and it no longer applies. Mm -hmm. Of course, there could be a lot of things in the Quran which were very much pertinent to the time and place. Uh, we all advocate that. Uh, but the theory of abrogation just places another layer of burden on, on the mind of the average Muslim. So conceptually, uh, one cannot say that the Quran is like speaking to me now because it's this other layer says no. Mm -hmm. And then where do they find the information about which verses might not be there in the Quran, for example? Yes, uh, this, uh, this is another conceptual problem because when the Muslim picks up the Quran, the, the Muslim feels that between the covers of this Quran, uh, these are 
This is the Quran. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but it, the, the theory of abrogation actually holds that outside of these covers, there are verses uh, which uh, are also very much Quranic. So if we read these verses, we say, oh, these are beautiful verses. Look at how powerful these, these speak to me. Mm -hmm. Well, those other verses are equally word of God, but they were not included in the Quran according to the theory of abrogation. Mm -hmm. They have been left out uh, deliberately, of course. It's mm -hmm. not that somebody um, made a mistake and left out some important verses. No, what we have in the Quran, even according to the theory of abrogation, is what God intended us to have in the Quran. But he had revealed more than these verses but those verses by divine wisdom were left out of the Quran for good reason. But they should sound equally beautiful. They should be equally miraculous because the words of God are, you know, according to Muslim theology, uh, equal. Mm -hmm. Even within the Quran, you can't say, you know, this surah is better than the other one. This <laughs> verse is better than the other one. No, mm -hmm. because they're all word of God. They're equal. And, you know, we don't, uh, we might prefer some. We like the sound of some and so on. That's our personal preference. But uh, conceptually, all of the words of God are, they are equal. Uh, now, um, but there are, according to the theory of abrogation, uh, words of God which were not included in the text of the Quran today. So conceptually, the Muslim does not really know uh, where this ends. And we will read reports in, in the introductions to some surahs uh, in the classic books of Tafsir, which say that, you know, this surah used to be much longer. Hmm. Uh, for example, we know that the longest chapter of the Quran today is Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, consisting of 286 verses. Uh, surah at tawbah by contrast, um, uh, the ninth chapter of the Quran consists of... Uh, 129 verses. It's great that you uh, know the numbers, Dr. Shabir. Well, it, uh, you know, it registers after you deal with this, uh, and by the grace of God, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Surah Al-Ahzab is the 33rd chapter of the Quran. And now here, uh, my memory doesn't serve me very well, but probably <laughs> about 73, <laughs> about 73, you've jinxed it. Yeah. So about 73 verses in Surah mm -hmm. uh, Al-Ahzab. Yet you will find reports saying that these surahs were longer. Surah Al-Ahzab was said to be, um, according to the commentaries even longer than Surat al-Baqarah, though it is shorter today. So what happened to all of those verses? And uh, Surat al-Azab, the 33rd chapter of the Quran, has a lot of legislation. Hmm. So if we are talking about, uh, let's say, a surah like Kul Huwallahu Ahad, it's not that much legislation. It just tells you conceptually that there is only one God. So let's say there were, you know, 11 other surahs which tell us basically the same thing. The fact that we only have one and not the other 10, you know, it's not going to make that much difference because we're not going to come away with a, a different number of gods at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but if we're talking about detailed legislation on how to govern society, those verses which presumably were left out would be pre very precious verses. And, and how could they be conceptually left out? Like the Prophet, peace be upon him, is there. He's teaching the Quran to the people. He is, um, you know, they're delivering it in public addresses. He is reciting it in the public prayers and people behind him are memorizing it just from the fact that he's reciting it there in the prayers repeatedly. Uh, people will come from outlying regions uh, they will send somebody to come to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to learn the Quran and go back and teach the rest. The Prophet, peace be upon him himself, sent out emissaries to go and teach the Quran to people in various lands. Um, now, it, once they have left with what was known to be a Quranic verse, of course, a combination of a lot of verses, um, and, and they've gone to a neighboring land, then uh, the people of, of that land uh, would know the Quran from what they have been taught at that time. Mm -hmm. If at a later date, uh, God uh, reveals to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you know what, uh, such and such verse should no longer be recited as part of the Quran. Now it would be incumbent upon the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to send out another emissary uh, to these neighboring lands to tell people, you know, such and such verse uh, should no longer be recited. But uh, lo and behold, we don't have a single narrative uh, saying that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did something like this. Hmm, okay. And and that seems to uh, mean that, uh, you know, it, it, it's an inference that people came to later on where, where they inferred that this theory of abrogation applies and that verses should no, no longer be recited. 
uh, because we don't have it from the prophet, peace be upon him, that he sent any emissaries to tell people to cancel this verse or, or the other one. But, but the conceptual problem that we're describing here is that if we do accept that theory of abrogation, it means that we don't know where the Quran ends. And, and if somebody brings a verse, uh, like an old parchment, and says, you know, this uh, seems to be a verse of the Quran, we wouldn't be able to say yeah or nay. We can't mm. say yeah because it doesn't have the backing uh, of, of, you know, centuries of tradition of people saying this is really the Quran, and especially the early attestation because it's just a parchment that people found. But at the same time, you can't say nay uh, because uh, it may very well be a, a verse uh, which could be accommodated within that broad concept that there were verses which are not in the Quran, but they have been excluded. Mm -hmm. Now, the simplicity of, uh, of uh, rejecting the, the theory of abrogation, uh, as defined in that classical scholarship, as we explained in the previous program, uh, is that for the Muslim then, the Quran is this. This is the book. It has two covers. What's it's within? intact. It's intact. Mm -hmm. And uh, it comprises of 6,000 and some verses. The verses are numbered differently in various readings, but 6,236 in the uh, reading of Hafsa Nasim, the Iraqi counting system. And, uh, and, and this is all there is to it. There is no other verse. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the theory of abrogation says, okay, there was another verse, and then they will recite the verse to you even. So there's even a report about that. And that leaves people in limbo, uh, not knowing uh, what, what, what did we make of this? Is it a, did God reveal it this way, or did somebody make this up? And uh, so conceptually, the theory of abrogation is highly problematic. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. We've looked at the conceptual problems. Next time, we'll look at the practical problems with the application of abrogation. Sure. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at Quranspeaks.com.